one, I'm going to sit around from sparkling memories, a place where you can build healthy relationships with food, parents, and yourself. And today, we're actually going to talk about is apartments and how to get an apartment without having any kind of credit and what to look for and how you could go about dealing with it. Because as you know, in these times, especially with everybody looking for some place, it cannot be the easiest to do. Because number one, if you don't have credit, it's like having no credit. Two, if you don't know people, then you don't get anywhere quickly. So it's best you do interact with other people, try to connect, find out ideas, get resources. Three, using social media. It's the easiest way to find private owners and you don't have to deal with a big, huge company that requires a lot of stuff going on. And the fourth thing, you wanna get someplace that's not, I don't want to say crazy, but you wanna get someplace that fits you and what you're currently looking for. You don't want to be in a spot whereas it's very far from your job, there's no parking, there's no food places, there's no public transportation, there ain't nothing going on. That makes it complex, especially if you don't have a car or you're taking public transportation or you, it's not just you. It's you and someone else and it's not just you by yourself. So that's when it becomes complicated because you might be looking for one thing and the person that is going to be there with you might be looking for something else. So you have to come to agreement as far as what you're looking for in terms of the size, location, budget, and whether or not you want some place that's a lot of neighbors or is little to none. I can tell you, when you relocate, and me being a person I am, I relocated several times, so I know how difficult it is to get into somewhere quickly, fast, and in a hurry. The first thing you wanna discuss is actually where you're gonna stay while you're looking. You can actually go by your family members or you can actually go by your friend's house or your associate, someone that you actually trust, or you can actually rent a room in a time being in order to find somewhere and have something to do in terms of eating and sleeping and using the bathroom and going to and from work, depends on your situation. So you wanna find out where you're gonna stay. The second thing you wanna do is discuss your budget. You wanna know whether or not you want something from $700 or you're looking for something for a thousand and change, or you're looking for two thousand and change. Are you talking about apartment? Are you talking about a house? Are you talking about a condo? These are all things you need to take into consideration. Now, as you move forward, you want to discuss exactly how long you want to get through this floor. Because some places are month to month, some places are a year, some places want you to do advance a lot farther than just the year. So it all depends on that type of situation. Another thing, use your social media, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, there's several ways of finding it. I think the best way to do it is actually go online because there's several sites. There's apartment.com, rent.com, there's Zulil, Zulo, and then there's Facebook, Messenger in the Marketplace, and then there is word of mouth, looking and acting with people and getting to know them and getting to ask them how they went about dealing with it because it might not be easy for you but to get someplace sometimes you have to go outside the box and then after you done discuss your finances the third thing you want to do is do you want to be in the countryside where there's a lot of trees or you just want to be someplace whereas it doesn't matter it's just you want to make sure you have a laundry mat nearby you want to make sure there's places you can eat and transportation as far as parking if you have your own vehicle or you need public transportation. Now, another thing you want to do when you're talking to people, and I'm talking about people who might future be your landlord, don't get too detailed. Too many times people say a lot more that's actually needed. And a lot of questions are going to be asked when you get in a place. Because one, the person doesn't know you. Two, they don't know if you're lying on your application. Three, are there fees involved in this application? And then four, is there anywhere there's a list you have to go by? Or is something simple as if you come in, do you get a place tomorrow? A lot of different things can happen. Another thing you want to suggest is when you're doing it, try doing it with someone else and looking at particular areas. Because if you look at something downtown, you can tell a person I'm looking within this particular zip code. 
and then you can actually go to agencies because some people actually play others to look for a place for them my favorite spot to do it is online online and interact with people in areas that have driven by and seeing how nice the places are and talking to some of the people who might be my future neighbor and then actually going in and talking to the leasing agent one of the things you want to do when you talk to a leasing agent, you want to be very specific as far as where you work, where your income looks like, if you have a vehicle, if you have children, if there's going to be you and someone else or as a family. All these things you want to take into consideration because these are the questions they ask when you're trying to get into an apartment. Now, get into an apartment and you see things according to the comment section look really great. So... They might show you some place that looks really nice. They like to call this the model. The model is simply showing you the nice area in far as apartments and what yours may look like. Because I've noticed a lot of pieces, a lot of places show you model of stuff, like a particular apartment they done upgraded versus the one you're actually going to get. My thing is, I wasn't even looking for all of that. I just wanted something that was had easy access to parking which means I don't have to park on the side of the street somewhere where really someone can hit your car in the evening time and it had to be close to certain things like public transportation because you don't know how or when your vehicle might go down or when you might actually need to get to the US for me I had to get my passenger sign the seat was recalled so I had to take it into the shop so that day I had to take the bus to and from the dealership so you can actually change the airbag in that particular side of the vehicle so you never know when you're going to need a public transportation and then where I picked it had a lot of grocery in terms of a supermarket it had a lot of food places and it's only one like a two-story it wasn't just all one story and you just from the road directly in you also want to have like a lay level because some people, the apartments and the houses is like right on the end of the road. Like this is the road and this is your apartment. Those things between the road and you is like a lay sidewalk. And then just on you if you want that. And a lot of times you gotta consider if it rain or it floods, if you want something at a level and have some stairs to go up before you get in. All of these things I can into consideration. Now, say for instance, you're renting a house now. If you're renting a house, would the landlord be responsible for fixing things or would you be responsible? These are all the questions you want to ask when you're looking for a place. Because you leave them out and you have find out later on that the landlord is not as frequent as you thought. And you have to deal with these things on your own money and maybe get reimbursed or maybe not. These are things you got to look at. And then from there, you need to figure out, okay. How am I going to pay the landlord? Some people lose Zilli. Some use a bank account. Some people use particular supermarkets where you could pay your electric bill. You might pay your rent that way. Or using cash. Because some, some landlords will use cash. <laughs> I know how it sounds silly, but some people use cash. Or does directly from their account. I wouldn't quite advise that. Because... You don't know the person long enough to say, okay, this is my bank account number and just go from there. Like I had a landlord where I had to put my money in a particular bank account and it was their bank account and not mine. So I wasn't too much worried about that because I could put in cash, I could put in check, personal check, you know. But I didn't want to do a transfer like directly from my account into the landlord's because some instances you can do that if it's more comfortable for you I'm not suggesting you do it <laughs> I'm not suggesting you do it, but you can but when it comes to different places you want to get places you see them in the night you want to see the kind of traffic and how much people there are and what type of people there are in that area so if you see some place and you don't put in the application you don't pay the fees drive by in the night okay you want to see exactly what's going on because some places you go and the trash is like pile high and then the places doesn't have good upkeep as far as the landscaping go and then the neighbors will straight up tell you this is a slum lord don't rent from these people 
I want to leave so bad. I got to get out of here. I want to let you come here to live. All this thing you want to go sit up when you're looking for an apartment. Till next time, this is Miss City Ramp and Sparkling Memories. Bye-bye.